Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is an update to my home network. Over the course of a couple years, I've gone through transitioning from the Verizon Fios proprietary gear over to using a uh, Ethernet over coax, using Mocha, and then slowly transitioning into a full unified network, getting rid of all the proprietary gear through Verizon so I have more access and more control of my network. So today, we're going to go through the rat's nest right behind me, and this is my kind of media cabinet, media closet right here. And we're going to go through how it's set up currently. I'm going to find out a couple things that I forgot I had hooked up in here and how I hooked it up. And we'll go through a quick little topology of what's going on. So here we go. Let's walk in here real quick. Um, going to quickly go over how it's set up, what it looks like. Not going to spend too much time on here. There's still some legacy equipment in place. But on the other side of this wall right here is the outside of my house. This is where the ONT for the fiber system is located. It comes in via a power cord and here is the power brick for Verizon Fios. I can easily reset the system by clicking this button, holding it down. LED will turn off and it will reset the power to the ONT allowing me to reset my network if I need to. From the ONT, we've got a CAT6 cable that comes in through the wall. So it goes uh, fiber to the ONT, ONT transitions over to a CAT6 or coax. If you're using less than a 100 meg service, they would use coax to come in. However, when I upgraded to the 300 meg service, we had shifted over to CAT5E. I then had an individual come out when we were doing some other troubleshooting on network speed and we ran CAT6. So got plenty of extra laying around here. From here, it goes to a 12 port punch down and I've got it hardwired here into port one. Out of port one, I've got it going on this very short cable to my Unify three port uh, security gateway. This gateway has been great. Even though I have gigabit service, this gateway still works perfectly fine as a gateway. You're just limited to what preventative systems, security systems you can enable. You can enable everything, but it's going to pinch your tube down to 85 megs because that's all the power that this thing can, can go through all your packets and, and um, the maximum security throughput is only 85 megs on this. So I only have intrusion um, detection system and intrusion preventative system, IDS IDP, is turned off. Deep packet inspection is the only thing that's turned on just so I can see what kind of, um, it's like a packet sniffer. It's going to look at everything that goes every network. So that's all that I have on right now. Um, the four port, which is the USG Pro, can go up to, I think, 250, 300 megs. And we're going to be upgrading this here um, next couple months. We're going to go with the Unify Dream Machine Pro, which is going to replace the gateway and it's going to replace the cloud key. So the cloud key is also um, built into the uh, Dream Machine Pro. So leaving the USG, it's going to go up to my Unify 8 port switch. So this is a layer two switch and it's got four gigabit ports and four gigabit ports that can go Power Ethernet. So what do I have on all these ports? The first one, port one, goes to my USG. Port two, here, standard port, goes to the first port of this Netgear uh, Switch 8. Uh, I think it's called a Switch 8 Flex. So this is another layer two switch. So there's a lot of stuff on here, but this is just terminated to all the wall ports down here in the basement. On these four ports over here are my uh, my PoE devices. So I've got this black one right here. 
is going on the other side of the wall and I have a AP uh, AC light on the other side. We'll show you that in just a moment. This port 8 goes into my end wall which is hardwired to my office upstairs. Uh, and this one right here goes out into the other room through the gym out into the garage which is my upstairs access point and this one right here is uh, another one that goes outside to a a camera that's what this one is this is a camera now the cloud key gen 2 this is going and be empowered over USB-C. So I quickly looked at this before I turned on the camera and the USB-C is plugged in here to the top of the switch. So if the switch powers down, this can power down as well. This originally was plugged into one of the ports over here. I wish this camera would stop auto-focusing on me. But, see if we can uh, Okay, so that's that's the basic network right there. We've got comes in, goes to this punch down, goes in the USG. From the USG, it goes out to my main switch, which is a switch eight, 60 watt, and from there it branches off into another switch. I could replace this switch eight and this switch and do one 24 port switch. That is the future. That is what I would like to do. I would like to have this gear in a small box right here. Um, put some plywood on the wall. Let me back up a little bit. Put it on the wall right here and have my Dream Machine Pro and a 24 port switch right here. And that would alleviate a lot of this. Um, up here in the top, the only other devices I have hooked up besides my, uh, my Sonos is a my cloud mirror so that's a uh, it's got two two terabyte drives so it's two terabytes total um it's in a mirror raid array and that is my local nas right there uh, and it's got some plugs up here for some different devices and that's what we got so i said just a few minutes ago that i got rid of all of my proprietary verizon gear I don't use TV anymore. There's really no need to use it. Um, I'm using streaming right now. And even with uh, my access points I have, they're limited only to 300 megs because that's just a throughput on uh, Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi AC. I can still completely saturate each access point with the kids watching TV, streaming YouTube, streaming um, Netflix and Hulu and people on computers and still never fully cap out my internet. So we can have 300 megs running from one, 300 megs going to from another, and still have plenty of bandwidth for everything else. So real quick looking at here on the other side, that's the, the media cabinet right here, um, or spaghetti. Um, on the other side of the wall right here, I had coax going to an old uh, Verizon gateway so that gateway right there um, was feeding some wireless Fios 1 boxes this is a it could be uh, it could be power of Ethernet but this is running a Wi-Fi right now so this is a Amcrest camera that I'm using I was uh, I was testing it there should be a review on my site here so this Amcrest camera is a pan, tilt, and zoom. Has on board, so right on, right on the back side right here, is a Ethernet jack, which can use for power over Ethernet, or it's just powered via a plug. It's powered via ASIC plug right now. And this is essentially looking at my whole basement. So down to my office, and this way over to the kids' play area. 
So I've got that in there. Other stuff I have, there's some jacks down here on the wall. There are some ethernet jacks right here. These are all terminated to the back of that punch down. That's why, you know, they're all labeled. Like this one's labeled uh, B3. So at least I know where that one is. This one right here, I don't know why there's no label. Maybe the kids pulled the label off. That should be like B4. And this runs right up on the wall. Pushing all those devices over to Wi-Fi has eliminated the need to have some of this spaghetti in here. Um, I might be replacing some of these cameras with the little stick cameras from Unify using the Dream Machine Pro. That will help as well. I won't need to have so much of this other stuff uh, uh, around. All right, so out here we've got the other the other access point. It's on the other side of the wall from here. So we've got an access point right there. Um, this one is just hardwired on that side of the wall. And some of my other cabling goes from here, goes through this drop ceiling. Let's walk over here real quick. Beautiful networking of cables going this way. underneath and out there in my garage um, up here in the upstairs office we've got the AP AC light right here uh, no excuse me this is the in wall um, it's got the couple jacks on the bottom of it so you've got a Ethernet pass through and then you've got Ethernet plus PoE so you can um, you can essentially plug in another power ethernet device to this, or you can use it as two ethernet outs. So, it's kind of cool. Um, it auto detects PoE or inside the Unify controller on, on the cloud key. You can do that. And we'll go down the hallway real quick. We'll come out into the living room. Where our other AP is up here. So this one goes um, in the attic above us, goes out into the garage, and um, goes to the floor. So out in the garage, real quick. Is our other Amcrest. This is a uh, fixed camera. It's got night vision on it and this is where the other PoE device um, I'm using a PoE injector for this one Because I, I think this is passive PoE. I don't think it's active PoE. So um, you need to have Full power going to it all the time if it tries to detect if there's power it will not click on All right guys, so there we went through the uh, The small network I have it here at the house. It's really simple um, there's a lot of spaghetti out there. We've got three access points. We've got a cloud key. Um, we've got two additional plug-in Ethernet cameras from Amcrest. I've got two wireless cameras out back for Ring. Um, but all that wireless stuff doesn't really mesh in with all the um, the hardwiring uh, of this network. The Verizon gear really didn't allow me to do what I wanted to do. Um, Verizon and Comcast, if you get any of that proprietary gear, it's going to leave some back doors, some holes open in your network. You'll have um, guest Wi-Fi hotspots, meaning somebody that it has the same account, whether if you're using uh, Comcast Xfinity, you can go over to a friend's house that has Comcast Xfinity, and you can essentially use the guest portal, log in with your credentials, and you can be on a segregated portion of their network. I don't really agree with all this. I don't like that. Um, there's so many Verizon routers um, and gateways um, within the vicinity of these neighborhoods that 
you can essentially see everybody's SSID, everyone's guest network, and if you don't know much about networking, you can jump onto the, essentially using their gateway to get to the internet. You may not be able to get onto their private network, but there may be a way to do that um, if you've got the tools and capabilities and the uh, the knowledge. You can do that. Um, people in the cyber field they understand that they know that and um, I was trying to get away from using that gear I understood that using the Fios 1 boxes there was kinda like this little niche thing where you had to use a Verizon gateway so it can communicate so and authenticate and it can say yes passes traffic over to those, to bo those boxes via wireless that's kinda why I had that as a separate um, a separate network so add a separate group of IP addresses and um, the Fios One wireless boxes were kind of that that gateway was double natted inside my network um, kind of like it just branched off and it was like here's all my network and then it branched off and it was like okay here's all the Fios gear which nothing ever connected to those things besides the three set top boxes um, SSID was turned off, uh, guest network was turned off, and I set up a firewall rule within the USG to drop all traffic. It was not allowed to come over to my Unify network. 